Hey guys, Stubler. Today we got to look at the new Saipan Tier 7 American aircraft carrier. It's in the Bureau. Alright, so you can get it basically at any stage of the game you're in. You'd, it'll just progress faster the more uh, requirements you have, obviously. So, Saipan, we're going to be checking out a game on Domination Mode North, on the map North here, as well as compare uh, the planes stats in particular, but I'll just describe my opening thought process here for you. Um, basically, we have two destroyers per side. One of ours is on A, one of ours is on B. We also spawned on B. And one of our key roles in the destroyer is to provide spotting for our team. So we're going to reposition and just uh, fly directly at C, hoping these guys notice that there will be spotting momentarily. It's kind of frustrating when you're on a flank and you don't have a destroyer in front of you. Uh, either because they haven't picked up their controller or they're not <laughs> physically there in front of you. Uh, that's a disadvantage for sure, but the carrier can provide the same eyes uh, in the sky. So that's the goal over here. We're actually going to find one of the destroyers. We'll attack them a little bit here and there, but you'll see we really keep them uh, spotted just by flying over this guy for long periods of time. And we will have teammates that will shoot at him. Uh, I think some of the shots might be relatively difficult. I mean, they don't wreck him very quickly, uh, but we will just basically fly above this guy, keep him lit, and they will shoot him. So that's the opening sequence here. We'll dive into the stats a little bit, but uh, this is the second time that I've updated, like a new, I put a new uh, stats for a carrier on my sheet here, and noticed that there was dramatic changes that I didn't see any <laughs> mentioned of in the patch notes. I don't know if you guys came across something that I didn't. Uh, but Two times ago, the restoration time was reduced dramatically, like by about a third. This time it went up again. Uh, I, I don't have my previous number, so I don't know if it re uh, if they replaced the original values or they're still trying to dial them in. But uh, basically, most of these restoration times went up by about 15 seconds or so. Uh, the Shikaku it looked like it only went up by about. Uh, seven or eight at least on I think it was the HE bombers one of the two uh, but a lot of them went up quite a bit uh, so they're playing around with these numbers I don't think they're talking about it I wish they would I wish they would be a little bit more obvious about these so that the community could weigh in but maybe they don't <laughs> they're not looking for uh, feedback by committee at least when it comes to balancing these carriers but Basically, you know, by extending the time of the restoration, there's less planes available, especially as the game goes on, reducing uh, the late game value, which I think is fair, because every other ship is uh, getting reduced in value as the time goes on. You know, AA gets shot out by HE shells, secondaries get worn out, whatever else. Uh, so, you know, tourists get knocked out. Carriers get basically... <laughs> stayed the same uh, superpowered strength throughout the game. So now that's kind of been dialed back. I think that's a good move. I also noticed uh, there was a lot of other minor tweaks. At first I was like, well, maybe one of my commanders got like a legendary promotion or something. But no, a lot of them, maybe there was a extra, you know, kilometer or not on the, you know, on the torp speed or something or half a kilometer detection. You know, there's a lot of tweaks here. So I Keep an eye on this. Uh, apparently, they're still playing around with these uh, stats. But Saipan, why I was really looking at the... Uh, I wasn't necessarily even going to plan on do doing a deep dive on the stats, but I was like, well, the restoration time is 73, and I was comparing it to my old uh, stats. Like, I'll take the Kaga, for instance, which I haven't updated because I don't currently have it. That restoration time was at 47. You guys that own the Kaga can go ahead and check it now. It's probably about 62 would be my guess, give or take. Um, but I was like, wow, 73, that's huge. Well, that, maybe that's balanced by the fact that we have a lot of HP on these planes, about a third more than most of these. So you'll see here throughout this game that these things are actually pretty tough to shoot down. And I was thinking, okay, well, if they're tough to shoot down, it takes a little bit longer to respawn. Makes sense. Okay, so the restoration time remains on the high end. Like, uh, I got 73 on both the... Tor Bomber and HE Bomber on my builds here, uh, comparing that to a lot in the 60s, mid-60s. Uh, the Implacable does have a 77 on the HE Bomb, which is the longest regeneration on my aircraft carrier fleet. Um, but 
it's still the Saipan's restoration is still on the high side, um, but you know, it's everybody's uh, restoration kind of went up again. So we'll see how these uh, you know the balancing act goes, but they're still working on it apparently, <laughs> trying to dial them in. Um, Saipan though, it's pretty similar in performance to the Americans. Very durable is one of the main exceptions. Very easy to hit stuff because the time from when you first initiate the attack to you know when the attacks basically up it's I think it's about five seconds we can take a look here but you you got to be pretty close to your aim point some of the planes you have to really aim quite a bit in front of I'm thinking like some of the Soviets I've been playing a little bit these ones you know what was it six seconds or whatever I mean it's I've had more attacks I think we might have even seen one or two so far in this video where I was attempting to bomb them but you run out of time because I was just leading the attack by too much so once you get the feel for that it's actually easier uh, to do you know if you played a lot of games in the Saipan I think it you would consider it a very accurate ship the torps don't have a long travel time before they arm and neither does you know the bomb run uh, the HE bomber run goes very quickly so I think from that perspective it's easy again once you get a feel for that um, it's pretty hard hitting overall uh, the HE bombs, like the uh, Lexington, uh, very strong. It does a little bit less damage than the Lexington. Uh, you get, in this one though, we get three uh, sets of two planes attack. I think Lexington was three sets of three planes uh, per attack. So a little bit, probably less damage there, but I think it's easier to hit with these. So I think that's kind of the balancing factor here. So overall, in terms of uh, aircraft carriers themselves, I think the Saipan is pretty decent. Uh, you can see, I think this might be one where we run out of time here. Uh, you can see where, yeah, we just kind of run out of juice right at the end there. So that's what I'm talking about. And you, you might be looking at this game like, why are we watching a 840 damage point game? Well, we'll get more damage as the game goes on. But I hope if you were paying attention to that sequence when I was kind of discussing the ship stats as a whole, or the carrier stats as a whole, um, changing and then, you know, the... Saipans in general. Basically, we just fluttered around that uh, Z-35. He escaped through the channel. We, I was like, well, well let's go look for him once. Uh, we found him, luckily, and then we bombed him. And now it's on to the next. Why is that? Well, three caps to zero in favor of the red. And you can see the point deficit uh, is wide. <laughs> Gaping, as they would say in the business. So we're... We got three ships lost. They only got two. We got, most of ours are battleships. Uh, so we got some point difference in terms of that. But the fact that we've conceded the cabs for most of the game uh, is making it a lot harder. In fact, we, our destroyer that spawned on B, uh, can, had, it was an open cap for the first uh, five minutes of the game. And he just uh, conceded it for no reason. So baffling play here so far. Uh, this isn't quite a legendary tier game. It's tier 6, tier 7. So there's no real excuse. Uh, most of the Goombas are on legendary tier usually. Uh, but anyway, another example is kind of poor strategy. So we're going to have to really kind of have a pretty big impact here to try and get this one turned around. Now, I've been trying to, once we got that destroyer up, and trying to clean this up here, at least help these guys out. Because I need, you know, we've had like four ships over here, uh, basically terrified of like one or two ships. Like a Cleveland here. If you want to know how to counter the Cleveland, you push into it. Okay, if you let it sit there and shoot at you unmolested the entire game, you will be thoroughly disappointed with the results. Uh, but if you push into it, it doesn't have torpedoes. It can't defend itself properly. Uh, and then you can see there, once they actually did push him, he went down very quickly. So, too much hanging back, too much hesitancy. Whenever your flank has a numerical superior advantage, you know, you have more numbers on your side, in other words, push! Move into them. Attack with ferocity and velocity. Okay, don't sit back there lobbing shells. Or, in these guys' case, I don't even know if they had shots of those cruisers for a while. But the destroyers luckily did clear off the east. Uh, one of them's very far south. He's actually got the summers here with a torpedo. And a, one, it was the narrow spread, followed by a widespread. Narrow spread, of course, hit him. The widespread didn't. Um, but then, because we're flying over here, we're spotting them, these guys in the clouds, they can go ahead and shoot them, and they get them off there. So, once again, we're, I was trying to bomb them, yes, but I was also trying to keep them lit, because I saw those guys were shooting 
from their smoke cover. So we got both the destroyers down, and we're actually gaining the advantage now. The team has been doing a pretty good job in terms of fighting overall. Positioning kind of lacking, because again, they were playing behind the equator of the map, and the red team was playing on it. But because they are winning the fights, then we're still in this game. Got A, getting C, and now we're trying to get some damage here. So uh, that was a pretty decent uh, effort by the blue team, but you know, why I show that it was a heavy spotting game, but I think that's kind of the value. A lot of the players are always saying, well, I don't like to do that because you don't get rewarded with XP. I understand that if you're trying to grind out the tech trees, that can be very frustrating, but on this channel, we're primarily concerned with winning. Okay, high damage games um, are nice when they happen, but I think the main value strategically of the carrier is you know, finding ways to support and then executing that. And a lot of times spotting uh, is one of the, easy, the best ways you can help the team in a given moment. Uh, we did move into the cap there as well, and we were able to assist with the cap. And that's another thing you should be looking for opportunities for as a carrier player. Like, if you, if you really don't have a lot of red team threats near you, and I basically try and, you know, keep like an offensive line is how I visualize it between me and the red team so basically the bulk of the blue team force in between uh red and myself but a lot of times if you're safe like that and they don't really have access to your ship very easily then you might be looking around saying okay well we can actually move forward there a couple grid squares and uh grab a cap there and that's an awesome opportunity to do so so even though i think in this case our guy would have gotten it he kept getting reset either by the carrier or one of the battleships uh so i tried to move forward there and i was going to try and you know speed up the capture as well so we did get a little bit of a assistance bonus on that and here we're going torping the battleships here and you can see the kind of the tight arm time pretty easy to hit these shots you know i'm not a carrier pro by any means uh but you know after playing this this is probably game of game seven or eight of like 12 or 15 that i played i played a fair amount for in my view with the side pan to get a hang of this thing um but yeah, I think it's a pretty easy carrier to play. It seems pretty good in terms of the performance that I've been getting. You know, I've been a lot of the games. I think this one will be at the top of the leaderboard or close to. But a lot of the games I've been in the top half at least, which again isn't necessarily always the easiest because we're not getting rewarded in terms of scoring for all the plays that we're trying to make uh, with carriers. But you know, it's, it seems just based on my limited experience that it's been performing pretty well. So. Uh, overall, yeah, I think carrier players will enjoy the Saipan here. And yeah, we're just continuing here. Keep an eye on where we're uh, moving here now. I want to talk about this. Because this Brandenburg is coming around. And we're, we always want to be thinking a couple steps forward as the carrier. Uh, kind of like the battleship. you got to be thinking two, three minutes in advance. Where do I want to be? What do I need to respond to? Brandenburg was getting low. He's got guys shooting him. But if he gets around that island, blast me. Maybe we uh, go down here. Maybe they can force a comeback. So we do get in with the fire. And I was attempting to go north here. There's no uh, risk in doing so. Like, the only other player that could have been here was the carrier at this point in time. And if the carriers move close to each other in a dueling posture, that doesn't matter. That's You're at no more of a disadvantage or advantage than that guy. Um, you know, because basically you're going to be <laughs> trading slug shots back and forth at that point in time. So... We're just trying to stay away from the Brandenburg, uh, make sure he didn't get us off the board. And now we can go ahead and try and hunt this guy down. A couple more minutes left to get some extra damage, maybe get the final kill and rack up some score. So you guys let me know. I also want to get some feedback from you guys because my carrier builds are heavily pay to win. Like <laughs> it's, uh, I got the carrier commanders and then all the inspirations are goofball uh, made up characters. So... A lot of you guys are always asking me, what would you use on a commander build? So let me know what you got for King here. I think the commander build that you got for the Lexington would work just perfectly fine for this as well. So I want to get some feedback on that from you guys. But let me know about that. Let me know about the rebalancing. I don't think that's something that a lot of people are really aware of. I don't watch you know other people's coverage, so maybe they're on the story as well. But... It just keeps jumping out to me. It's kind of surprising that, you know, a lot of times when there are rebalancing uh, plays, you know, they appear in the patch notes a lot. So I always assumed that they were always uh, being posted when there were 
changes to the stats, but I can tell you at least with the carriers for sure that's not the case. The last two times that I've added a new carrier to the spreadsheet, I've had to go back and change the detection or no the restoration time for all the planes. Okay, so let me know what you think about that carrier players, anti carrier players. I think this is probably a better move. Having full squadrons at the end of the game was just ridiculous. Um, even though that's exactly what we got at the moment here. But that's because we have been losing a lot of planes uh, lately. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. we got lots of World of Warships for you all the time. Questions? Comments? Leave them below. Love to hear from you. We'll see you all later. Peace.